Hey guys, this is Justin for Generic Gaming, and welcome back to my Let's Play of Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. I say welcome back because I actually did start this Let's Play a while ago on the channel, but I played it on an emulator. And as you can see here, I actually started it here again, and I'm 13 minutes in. But guess what? My last em last, uh, my last try at this ended with a failure. Well, I have to erase this, because I recorded all the audio, but no video. Because I'm an idiot. So, let's start a new game for the third time on this Let's Play. It is just full of fail. This is so bad. Done. And this time, this is the last save file I'm going to make. It better work. We are at Mario and Luigi's house, same as it was from the original Paper Mario on the N64, which this game is a sequel to. The original Paper Mario was the spiritual successor to Super Mario RPG, The Legend of the Seven Stars, which was an SNES RPG. First one to feature Mario, it was developed by Enix, and it was actually really fun. A lot of people don't know about that game. It's very rare to find, but it's a great game. Definitely anybody who likes Mario RPGs should play it. Ooh, look, we have a letter from Princess Peach. Probably says something around the lines of, I've been kidnapped, come help. Again. Mutton Holiday on Mushroom Kingdoms, and my traveler came into possession of a mystical map. A treasure map, actually. It was inside an old box in a town called Royport. But since it would be too difficult for me to try and go find the treasure all by myself, I thought you could help me hunt for it. You will, of course, won't you? I've included the map with this letter, so please bring it when you come. Yeah, great idea. Let's just uh, send the map in public mail. Awesome. I'll meet you at Roadport. That means you must come, Peach. Uh, no, I could just leave you there. I don't have to come. What do you know? It's true. There's a withered old map here within the letter. Check it out. This is the lamest treasure map ever. There's no X to mark the spot or anything like that. And thus begins Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door for the third time. I'm really angry about that. Like, I'm not happy at all that I've done all this. Just just today, in fact. Like, t 30 minutes ago, I did all of this. Now I have to do it again. Prologue. A rogue's welcoming. Excuse me, sir? Please wake up, sir. The town you've been speaking of is coming to view. Look, that's Rogueport. It's a very oddly shaped town. Just kind of hanging out in the water there. You see, we'll arrive shortly. Pre please prepare to disembark. Coming up in a second here, you'll see some overemphasized paper style, which this game has a lot of. But I like it. I think it looks cool. I must apologize, sir. Our arrival was delayed just a bit by rough weather. Are you sure you want to disembark here? I did tell you the sordid, tor sordid tales about Rogueport on our way here, did I not? What's that? I'm sorry. You say there's a princess waiting here for you? Is that so? Er, of course, sir. Well, if that's what you think, then I won't stop you. But, uh, be careful, sir. Don't say I didn't warn you. And paper style just flips it around. It gets much worse later in the game, though. Mario, in fact, folds into a paper airplane at some point. And yeah, I know what a save block does. Just save my game. Thank you. Here you can ignore all these NPCs. And we are now introduced to Goombella. She is essentially Goombario in girl form. Also, she's an archaeology student now. This fat pink, uh, this fat purple piece of crap is Lord Crump. He is one of the main enemies in this game. It's always something. Looks like I'm gonna have to give you a little taste of the Crumpa Bomb. Yeah, that's a great name, the Crumpa Bomb. Battle time. Just jump. Just jump or use your hammer. I just like to jump for the first battle, get my timing down. I love that you can start this game using timings and you don't have to uh, wait to get to the lucky star that Twink would give you in the first Paper Mario on the N64. Waiting for that was annoying. 
Wow, I am missing these timings bad. When I did this recording last time, I didn't miss a single timing. I got them all perfect. But whatever, I got my 9 star points. 100 star points levels you up. Each level up, you get to either add HP, FP, or BP, which are badge points. They allow you to equip upgrades with badges that allow you to do more special moves, things like that. We will be getting into that when I get a badge, though. But for now, let's watch all these people jump completely away from me, and then I slowly disappear somehow. And now I'm just gonna, you know, walk out of the crowd. Let's just casually walk away like nothing's happening. In the emulator version of this, when I did it originally on the channel, you couldn't see any of this. It was just shadows, and that was annoying. For anybody who hadn't played this game, they had no idea what was going on. It was bad. Like he was just looking at a bunch of shadows on the ground. Crud! They bolted. Can't say crap because it's an E-rated game. I don't know if that's a rule or not, but I'm just assuming that's what happened. Wow, he totally saved me, thanks. Here's a reward. A kiss counts as a reward in Mario game, apparently. The name's Goombella. I'm a student at the University of Goom. Nice to meet you. So, uh, who are you? I'm Mario. No big deal. You know that guy who rescues Peach all the time? Well, we're gonna do it again. I already hate it here. There are freaks and weirdos everywhere. It's nasty. I mean, I know it's a place called Rogueport, so I should have expected it, but sheesh. I'd never come to a place like this if it weren't some legendary treasure here. Oh yeah, I know about that legendary treasure. Yeah, I'm looking for it. What you got there? That's treasure map. Now, if you look in the background, anytime they're telling big story points like this, there's always something going on in the background, and I love it. Just watch these uh, mafia guys beat them up. Stay down, bro. The boss sends his greetings. How's that road taste, punk? And then they run away. <laughs> She told you she'd meet you here in Rogueport? Intriguing. She's talking about Princess Peach. Uh, we don't know where he, she is. She, you know, kind of disappeared. I only took her eye, my eye off her for a moment, but as soon as she did, I van as soon as I did, she vanished. God, I can't talk today. This is bad. <laughs> I thought she'd be back momentarily, but at this point, I fear we must embrace the possibility that she may never return. I've been at a loss for what to do. I've been fraught with worry, I tell you. But I'm feeling better with you here. Master Mario surely will find her. Surely. But I know my place, Master Mario, and this is not it. I leave this task to you. Basically what he's saying is, I'm gonna uh, go sit in the inn and get drunk for the rest of your adventure. Peace out. Now go do my work. Yes, the Mushroom Kingdom, Peach. Yes, Peach sent me the treasure map. And here she goes, she's gonna join our party. Way to invite yourself. Mm-hmm. She's basically Goombario. I don't need to know anything else about her abilities. She tells you about what's going on. Most of it's useless. Every now and then there'll be some helpful hints, but for the most part, you can figure it out on your own. She also has Head Bonk, just like Goombario. Tattle, just like Goombario. And now we're gonna go find her professor. Who's over this way. Up here are the Super Shoes. You will get these later in the game. I actually did somehow figure out a way to get... Yes, I have saved before, but fine, I'll do it again if you want me to. I did somehow glitch my way up to those super shoes in one of my save files, and I actually got, like, the fifth crystal star before any of the other ones. Which was funny. I don't know how I pulled that off. Yeah, so those are, um, bandits. They are common in Rogueport, and he just stole half my coins. That's so lame. I hate this town. Well, guess what? Your professor lives here, so we gotta be here. This is Professor Frankly. He will tell us everything we need to know about the Thousand Year Door and the Crystal Stars and everything else. Except he doesn't know his own student's name. You're Goombella, aren't you? You were in my archaeology class last year, am I right? Yes, you are, sir. You figured it out. Who? He does not know Mario. So, this is more story about how they think it's a fairy tale, but clearly we know it's true, or else this game wouldn't exist. 
One must have the crystal stars to find the thousand year door, blah blah blah, thousand year doors under here somewhere. Gotta have seven of them, just like you had to have seven stars in Legend of... Or Super Mario RPG, the Legend of the Seven Stars, and just how, how there were seven legendary stars in Super Mario... Or not Super Mario, Paper Mario, on the N64. And yes, Professor, we do have the magical map. Big surprise. Here it is. With this, we can find the crystal stars just by holding it aloft before the legendary door. I'm mostly skipping through the uh, pointless parts here, and I'm just filling you in on important things like that. So now he will re remove the paper gate, which just falls off the map. And let's go. Down the pipe. Okay, last time I hit the wrong option and I had to go through the action commands. Yes, I know how to do them. No thanks, I'm good. That just saved a lot of time. It took me like five minutes to get through that stupid action command, like, tutorial sequence. It's just annoying. Let's start working our way through the underground of Rogue Port. Got about four minutes left in this episode, so I'm gonna stop. There's a fortune teller over here, but nothing else until you get the bomb. Working our way this way, we're going to run into our first enemies. What a fine looking Goomba with a, tummy, a tubby mustache man like that. <laughs> So they're trying to hit on Goombella there, and that didn't really work out well for them, because now we're going to kick their ass. Yes, I did play the original Paper Mario. I don't need these tutorial sequences. Both you and your partners have action command timings that can make you uh, block things and hit twice. Both are very useful. And in this game, new to this game at least, they can actually attack your partners too. Your partners have a certain amount of health. Before, if your partners got attacked, they'd just be knocked out for a couple turns. But now they can have a limited amount of health and get attacked completely separate from you. More old tutorials on what a first strike is. There's nothing out that way until you get the paper airplane upgrade, so let's ride the floating platform. Another new addition to this game is you can actually go to the backgrounds of these maps. If you looked in the background there, there's a little city-like area, which we'll eventually get to. Oh, another battle. I'm probably going to cut away a lot of these battles because they're just wastes of time. But anytime there's new enemies or new battles or something interesting happens, I'll leave them in. But uh, from here on out, any just single Goomba battles like that, I'm cutting out. Oh yeah, every now and then after battles they drop items like coins or help hearts. See, that's something new. I struck first, so I'll show this. When you strike first, you can get action commands and essentially end the battle right there if it's just one enemy. Doesn't even get a chance to attack. When you strike first like that, you strike first, then you attack, then they attack. So you get two attacks before they get even one. Here's an item. Yeah, I know what a mushroom does. Nice struck first again. We will go ahead and skip this. Now, if you noticed, he had a fire flower there. They can use those items. We'll check out what's behind that pipe later, but for now... Over here, I wanted to show you this. You have to have more powerful hammers to knock all this stuff down. You also have to be able to jump on top of these. But what these do, these big blue switches, is they open up these pipes here, which are the quick transport that I absolutely love the sewers for. These quick transports uh, allow you to just basically take a pipe to a town that's all the way across the world. It's very useful and was one of my favorite features of the original Paper Mario. I loved the sewers for the quick transport and because they have bloopers. That is a puny, we will be seeing more of him later. You get struck first. New enemy, so I guess I'll show it. Oh wow, I actually missed that action command. I don't think I've ever missed a hammer action command before. 
Unless I was just screwing around and I just wanted to end the battle quickly. Wow. I can't believe that just happened. I feel retarded. Now this is where striking first is nice. There's two enemies like this. I can essentially end the battle here. Well, not on these because they have more health, but if these were two Goombas, the battle would be over. Thankfully, I'm going to go ahead and take no damage, and you're gone. Bye-bye. More paper emphasis? It just folds away. There's also paper that's folding back here, but we will get into how you get back there much later in the game. We are nowhere near that point. Now you'll notice there's another paper airplane thing there. And there's a key here. We need that black key for later. And by later, I mean in like four seconds. Right in here is a mysterious black box that talks to us. Hey, you, can you hear me? You can? That must mean that you're the hero of the legend. I'm sure he tells everyone that. Only the great hero of the legend can hear my voice. Yeah, everyone else? Nothing. See, long ago, an evil spirit cast a curse on me. I was locked in this box. I was bummed. I love that. <laughs> Just a bummer I was locked in here. I've been here ever since, waiting a long, long time for the hero to come by. So yeah, anyway, big guy, what brings a hero like you to a place like this? Er, Mario, a word with you? I'm not exactly confident we can trust this box. Yep, you just said it out loud, you retard. Way to go. What is wrong with me? Mm-hmm. I already have that key, actually. Yeah, your key wasn't very far away. Thanks for nothing, fools! Oh, big surprise. It was a negative thing. Who would have guessed? I burned you. What, you think I was going to help you? Instead, I'm going to spread a little of the suffering I've endured in that stupid box. Yeah, sorry, but those are the breaks. I'm going to cast an evil, terrible curse upon you. Boogly woogly woo! You're cursed. <laughs> now, if you press Y in certain areas, you'll turn into a paper airplane. See? More paper emphasis. You're doomed. I like how he has to explain his curse and everything. You press Y, you turn into a paper airplane, and now you can fly by tilting left and right. Yes, I got it. It's terrible. Farewell, you foolish fool. <laughs> and more paper effects like that. They just crumpled up the screen. I actually love that effect. Is the crumpling of the screen. And now using our paper airplane curse, we can just easily fly across the map. So terrible. And here we go. Look, it was just there the whole time. That, my friends, is the Thousand Year Door. And it was literally right in front of us the entire time. Look at that. It's the Thousand Year Door spoken of in the legends. I can't believe it's real. So the legends are all true. There it is, big as life. Come, let's move closer. In the next episode, we will move closer to the Thousand Year Door. So, I will see you guys then.